I actually believe this congregation has a pretty clear sense of what it means to, to believe and to behave in a way that is consistent with our citizenship in the kingdom of God. I think of Jerry Jenkins, a member of this church, who takes a group of people every week to the women's prison to work there. And the group that they gather with are not a bunch of convicts. They're not a bunch of people that have broken the law. They are individual human beings that they come to know. And they come to know their names. They come to share with them. And it changes their lives. Chris Baker, who you will remember, came and spoke to us from Inc. 180, that wonderful program in Chicago that removes or transforms the tattoos of those who have gotten caught up or been brought into sex trafficking or those who have been part of gangs. Well, Chris is thinking about moving his ministry to Houston and asks for our prayers in that. But Chris does not talk about gangbangers or prostitutes or anything. He meets human beings one-on-one -on -one and doesn't allow for there to become hate or the ability to kind of put on groups of people the blame for problems. He gets to know people one-on-one, -on -one, changing their hearts. When we come to the table, we come together, yes, as a community, but remember that God knows your name. God knows you individually. And God extends that invitation to you as an individual because it is in that one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Lord that we are transformed. Let us prepare now for a time at the table. Jesus. 
Jesus sits at the table breaking the bread with his friend teaching what he is able before his life You know, I take us back again and again to the historical context of this meal that we gather together to serve. And today we sometimes don't understand the radical nature of what those early followers of Jesus did, where they came together in groups and it didn't matter whether they were Jews or Gentiles, it didn't matter what the color of their skin was, it didn't matter if they were slave or free. The one time that a multicultural, multi-religious group of people came together to have a meal, the only place you could find it in all of the Roman Empire was when the followers of Jesus came together to share a meal. And you know, sometimes over the centuries, the church has tried to put up barriers or to make things that kept people away. And yet one of the things I love about this tradition that we share is that there are no fences, there are no barriers, and that all are welcome at this table. And so this morning we come to remember a time that Jesus gathered his followers together in a room and he took an ordinary loaf of bread during the meal and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this is my body that will be broken for you and for all. And at the end of the meal, he took a cup this was something they always did. They gathered and had a cup, but this time Jesus blessed the ordinary cup of wine. We use grape juice here at Cypress Creek. And he said, this is my blood that will be shed for you and for all. So your sins will be forgiven. And he told his followers, whenever you gather from this point on to share a meal, remember me. And so this morning we do gather around this table to share a meal. The table doesn't belong to us here at Cypress Creek Christian Church. It belongs to Jesus. And we meet the risen Lord here at this table every week. And as we come to share this meal, we'd invite you to bring those blue cards and drop them in the baskets and bring a portion of the many offerings or of the many gifts that you've received and share those as well. And if you're unable to come forward just raise your hand and we'd be happy to serve you right where you are. Let's pray together. Oh, gracious, gracious Heavenly Father, our maker, our artist, thank you so much for making all of us your masterpiece. We're all your individual puzzle pieces. And you've, you already know the picture. You've painted it. You know it. I love it. I love that vision of all of us being your puzzle pieces and you put us all together to form this beautiful masterpiece. Thank you for making us part of your kingdom. And thank you so much for this table, for this meal. Thank you so much for our gifts. Thank you, thank you so much. And thank you so much for that beautiful prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
What a joy it is to be a part of this time of worship, to come together and sit with you and sing with you and pray with you and, and to know that God has been a part of all of it. This day, on behalf of the living Christ, I extend an invitation. It is an invitation into a relationship with Him. It is an invitation into a covenant community that will support you. For this idea of being a citizen of the kingdom of God, that we have this clear picture of who Jesus is, it is still hard work. There will still be moments when we will stumble and fall, but it is good to know that there is a community around us, people that will help guide us, who will pick us up and put us back on our feet, who will pray for us. And so this day, I offer that invitation. And if you would like to connect your life with this community of faith, we invite you to either come forward as we sing our, our song of discipleship or to meet with one of our elders or pastoral staff immediately after the service. Most importantly, we want to help you connect with Christ and to grow in your relationship. I invite you now, if you are able, to please stand and let all of us join our voices.
let me ask a favor. Our high school youth, uh, this point, are somewhere across Arkansas. They spent the night there last night on their way to Nashville on their mission trip. Be prayerful for them as they will be joining up with about 200 other high school youth from our denomination to do a lot of different mission work there. So be prayerful for them that they will have open hearts to that experience for I truly believe those mission experiences can be very transformative for our youth. Tonight, our elders meet at 5 o'clock, and the general board will be meeting at 6.30, so if you're a part of either of those groups, please make note of that. And then next Sunday, July the 5th, one service. Twice a year we do this, the one closest to the Sunday closest to the 4th of July, and then again on Epiphany Sunday. So one service next Sunday, 10.30 a.m. means that you that come to 9.30 get to sleep in a little bit more. Uh, but after the service, we'll be going over to the gym. And there we are going to be having a wonderful lunch together. We invite you to bring a side dish if you can, uh, but there will be plenty. So come and be a part of not only that wonderful combined service, but the meal that will follow. And then two weeks from today, July the 12th, uh, we will be continuing our conversation around Dare to Dream. A lot of you read the book. A lot of you participated in small groups. Many of you heard the sermon series that was preached. Now what is the question? So often after marvelous experiences, they just kind of slip away. But we wanted to have a dinner together. And so two weeks from today at 5.30, we'll be gathering over in the gym to answer the question, now what? The dinner is free. There's child care. We hope that you will come. But we just invite you to call the church office to let us know so that we can prepare for the right number. But that, again, will be on July the 12th. So some exciting things that are happening. And then I would like to invite Tina and Barry and Julie to come and join me here for a second. And uh, we have for you a certificate of this day. I'm going to give that to you, Barry. And we also have uh, a cross that was made by a member of our congregation. And then a little prayer book. And it's one that my family has used. And, uh, and so we've been giving these away because we just have found it to be a real blessing. And so our hands are full. But I'm going to invite you after the prayer, if you'll join me at the back and allow folks to get to know Julie a little bit. So let us join hands. God, for all your many gifts, we give you thanks for the gift of new life, for the gift of a congregation that supports, and for the gift of Jesus that gives us a pretty clear vision of what it means to embody his life, his love, his goodness, and his grace. We pray, O oh, we pray, O oh God, that this day we will better learn, that we will better be able to live as citizens of your kingdom so that those who encounter us, those who meet us, know what it means to be a follower of the living Christ. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. How great is our God. 